So what are the four job hunting channels? And this is the first very counterintuitive thing uh, data shows us. Speculative introduction, meaning contacting your direct, your direct boss directly, your potential future boss directly, is followed by networking, followed by executive search firms, and followed by job ads, and I say followed by, because I'm already thinking one slide ahead, which is the average of success rates looking at the last three years. Normally, when I ask somebody, well, what do you think, what are the, what is the most effective job hunting channel when looking for a job, the majority would say networking, executive search firms, but very rarely do people say it's actually contacting your potential boss directly. So the speculative introduction. So this is already one very counterintuitive aspect, especially when talking about experienced managers or executives. In other words, if you're a CEO, looking for a CEO level job, you would get in touch with the CEO that you would report to either at a regional headquarters or a global headquarter. Okay, so let's start with the most effective job search channel, which is direct approach or also called speculative introduction. Um, it has an efficiency of 45.67% looking at the last three years, and it means to contact decision makers, so your potential boss, at minimum 75 to 90 well-selected companies directly by email. If you've been following our literature, you might find 60, 30 or 60 companies, given that we are in uncertain times with a lot of candidates on the job market, my, um, our recommendation is to extend that list to 75 to 90 companies right away and not wait to see whether 30 would be enough or not. Okay, if you don't have time, in other words, if you don't have a financial cushion, um, then right away extend the list to even 90 to 120 right away. Or if you know that you can't stay at home much longer for another two or three months, then just prepare a longer list of companies. Uh, IT support just let me know that for some reason the live um, transmission on Facebook is not working. So what we'll do, um, we'll post uh, on our Facebook company page an invitation to join Click Meeting directly. Sorry for the inconvenience. Okay, good. Um, and well-selected means that those companies are in line with the goal, which we discussed uh, in and during module one. Um, sourcing, meaning preparing a list of companies in line with the goal, a quick review means to choose the path of the least resistance, meaning choosing the most obvious fit from your today's um, position. In other words, which companies will see the biggest benefit in hiring you? So you can prepare a list of companies looking at uh, criteria um, by industry, by the type of problems they are having. They are having meaning that you could potentially solve by the size of the company, by their origin, meaning what could be that their certain set of language skills is important by rankings, by the level of maturity, by location geography, by the type of ownership. So by industry here, one of the easiest ways to prepare a list of company is actually go to Wikipedia. You can Google uh, rankings, industry rankings. You can search for market reports. So this is actually the easiest, um, easiest way to prepare a list of companies or industry portals. Then we have, uh, the criteria or the approach selecting companies by the type of problems they're having. So um, the approach here would be to define the problems you can solve. And it's usually either indirectly, it is usually in the directly or indirectly to help them make money or save money. Um, examples, post murder integration, uh, bad opinions and job portals, cost optimization, bad customer reviews increase in sales, etc. Uh, where do you find the type of information? 
you can track the media, you can track your own KPIs, reviews, rankings. Uh, you can ask your your network, well, um, if you have a company that's, that is having problem with their IT system, with their service provider, with their training company, et cetera, et cetera, let me know. Good. Then the next one, buy size, that's also not too difficult. Size, um, small and medium sized enterprises or corporations can be expressed in the number of people they employ, um, how much they're making, sort of turnover, where they are present, number of branches, number of cities, number of countries. Um, and here again, some say, why would that be important? Because the size of a company can be an indication of the type of corporate culture, how stable a company potentially is, how fast they are when it comes to making decisions. Um, so how many level of hierarchies there are, if you like speed, the big corporation is probably not um, the way to go. And you can look by origin. So um, that's particularly important for those who are foreigners in a country where the local language is important because that can be an obstacle during the job search if you're not fluent in the local language. Um, so what you can then do is find companies that are from your country or your language group um, because they will be less demanding when it comes to local language skills. Example, you are from Argentina working in Germany or studying in Germany and you want to find a job in Germany. So you would look for Argentinian companies that are based in Germany and then extend it to the language group and look for Latin American, Spanish speaking Latin American um, companies that are from Spanish speaking Latin American countries that have a presence, for example, in Germany. Um, where can you find them? On the internet chamber, you can look at the memberships of the chambers of commerce. Um, the other way to go about it, find companies that are from your new country with a presence in your home country or language group that might need your language culture skills. Um, so that's the same thing, but the other way around. So that would be German companies in Latin America or particularly in Argentina, if I continue with the example from before. And again, here you look for chambers of commerce, etc. cetera. Um, if you are a general manager or if you work in sales, um, here's an, a tip. You can make two separate lists. Uh, one, a list of companies that are already in the country and a list of companies that are not yet in the country, but in similar neighboring countries. So when approaching them as a CEO, as a sales director, you could say, listen, I see that um, your company has already has a presence in France, in Austria, in Switzerland, and Poland, but there is nobody yet in Germany. Uh, maybe you'd like to set up a structure in Germany um, or have at least a sales rep there. Okay, so rankings and awards. Uh, sometimes uh, it's important for a certain reason that there is a certain corporate culture. So you can look at the rankings as um, the great place to work uh, ranking. You can look at... Um, best employers, best places to work by Glassdoor, Fortune, 100 best companies to work by, great place to work. Now, um, what's important to take here into consideration is that the majority of those rankings are paid, so companies paid to take to participate in them. Still, I mean, it is another source to find companies that you want, want to work for. Um, then you can also look for um, dot, 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 friendliness, uh, mother or mom friendly workplaces, etc. Um, then what's also relatively easy to find is rankings or awards that are connected to creativity, innovation, fast growing. Um, Deloitte has very good um, reports, the Fast 50, Central Europe, for example, and there's so many, many more. 
So I also encourage you to look for market reports from Big Four. Then uh, level of maturity. It's not everybody's piece of cake to um, cup of tea, not piece of cake. <laughs> It's not everybody's cup of tea to work for a startup, uh, maybe it's a backed startup, so some startup that has already received the first round of financing, maybe a third round of financing. You can look at a company that is intensively expanding or stable or that they have been on the market for quite some time. So whatever reflects your needs the most. Then you can also go and look for companies by location and geography. Um, one thing, especially if you need to be close to home for some reason, you can check out tenants of the closest office buildings and you might be surprised to learn what kind of companies are actually in your closest vicinity. Um, then you can look for regional, local, global headquarters that are close by. You can open Google Maps and um, search on Google Maps. Um, yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> a comment on the chat, work at startup is not a piece of cake for me. That's why it's not my cup of tea. Exactly, that's what I meant. Thank you very much for rephrasing that. So going back to Google Maps, um, you actually, um, when you use Google Maps, search for specific um, keywords, but also try go from very specific keywords to broad, broad keywords. Um, try to search in both English and the local language. And here an example, um, if, if for some reason you were to look for a job in Sevilla, Spain, you can look for a broad keyword, Recursos Humanos, and you already have like 10 pins to double check. And then you can uh, look at the keywords that the companies used and uh, selection, uh, selection or consultora and start using and combining those keywords to generate a list of companies that are close by. Good. Then we have type of ownership. You can um, decide whether you want to work for a private owner. And here in parentheses, we've added uh, normal private owner versus rich private owner, meaning um, and this is especially for those at an, uh, the board level working for a private owner um, that is regularly ranked as the top five, top 10, top 50 millionaires of a country that is usually associated with a certain volatility, um, relatively frequent change of uh, the board. So also to take that into consideration. Then we have family owned that has its advantages and disadvantages. One of the disadvantages being um, whether um, they allow non-family members into, into the board. Uh, it is now currently a big topic uh, looking at COVID and what's happening. Um, more and more family owned businesses do ask themselves, maybe we should hire a professional, professional external um, board, uh, board member um, to get us through the next couple of years. A uh, type of ownership could also be a partnership, a holding, a corporation, trading on the stock exchange, etc. Here we have a question on the chat. Is there any clue for consulting firms? Um, this is another type of companies, yes. Um, and here you would do exactly the same kind of sourcing to understand what kind of consulting firms could be interested in your profile. And you do the sourcing, preparing the list in, in a very similar manner. You can look for consulting firms who are already offering the types of services that you could be delivering. And you could approach consulting firms that don't offer the services yet, and you could be the first one to do so. Um, you can look at companies that are co-owned or fully owned by private equity or venture capital funds. So how do you go about that? Step number one, as we already discussed thoroughly, you make a list of companies which we call sourcing. Once you have the list of companies, you need to identify your potential boss. Step number three, find their direct email address. 
and how do you do that? To find your potential boss, you log on to platforms like LinkedIn, Xing, or sometimes their local platforms, and you do the research. You can check the company website, Google or Yahoo, and definitely use both search engines because they use a different algorithm, which means you will see different search results. And simply ask your network, especially if your potential boss is not necessarily the general manager or the head of IT. If it's something more specific, um, not everybody's yet on LinkedIn, although more than 90% of professionals, I believe. So use your network as well. Um, and some might not have realized what changed between the two slides. So this slide says find your potential boss. And the next slide says find their email address. And the email address is exactly the same sources of, um, of information, LinkedIn company website, Google, um, and ask your network. Now, what's important when it comes to identifying your email address, you need two pieces of information. One is their name. And the other one is the structure of the email address in that uh, organization. And once you have those two pieces of information, you can deduct the, the direct email address. Um, how do you find email addresses here? A couple of tips. If they're traded on the stock exchange, you can um, look for investor relations, um, for the investor relations tab, and then click and it's usually, usually either IR at and then the domain or actually a direct contact person or you can download reports and somewhere at the, either at the very beginning or at the very end is who prepared your report and the direct email addresses. You can also look for media contacts, um, social media specialists are very often a um, bit more generous when it comes to sharing their contact details, um, HR contact person, and here on the chat, there is a question. Um, how do you find your potential boss in a really big company where it's difficult to get an idea about the company structure from open sources? Okay. Really, actually, with the really big companies, they are actually very often more transparent than the medium sized companies. Um, so I would look for probably on the website, uh, try to understand the overall company structure. And then on LinkedIn, if you, um, for example, choose a rather big country, um, I don't know, Coca-Cola in uh, Germany, and then you have 1,200 employees, and then you uh, narrow it down to a certain location, then you can see, okay, there, uh, and you start looking at the different names of the position. So you start to do deducting, okay, this could be here. This person probably reports there. So you, this is really playing or being a little bit of an internet detective. Plus, um, also have a look at your network and figure out maybe there are people in the net network who used to work for those companies and who can help you with that as well. Um, and um, then there are sites like hunter.io or email-format.com uh, um, where they help you or they um, suggest with a certain level of certainty or probability that uh, this is, uh, and they suggest then the format of the, um, the email address, most um, uh, email format most likely used at those at that organization. I think I need a sip of water. <clears throat> Good. Um, one thing we'll do after today's webinar, Marcelina will add a link to download a full guide of how to find email addresses. Um, so you can, and there is really a step-by-step -step guide of how to identify the right person and their email addresses. And then step four, so we said step one, um, make a list of companies, step two, find your potential boss, step three, find their email address, step four, contact them. Um, here on the chat, I have a new a suggestion from Claudio. If I can su suggest to exploit Google, um, Singwell could plus, mm -hmm. so, um, 
Claudio's, uh, if you can read Claudio's comment. So of course, when using Google search, um, there are obviously abbreviations and that's part that is included in the guide we're sharing afterwards. But thank you very much for, for mentioning that. Okay, so when you contact them, what's important is to remember that we don't want to overwhelm the reader and take it one step at a time. Um, which means that when reaching out, the first thing somebody sa sees is the subject line, which then leads to the reader, to the recipient, to either click on the email or delete it. And how the, e the, the email, the cover email is uh, formulated, that person will then either click on the CV or delete uh, the email. And the quality of the CV, which we discussed uh, last module, uh, then leads to a screening call or delete, etc. Okay, so um, contact your potential boss. This is uh, a question out to all of you. What would you add in the subject line when reaching out to your potential superior in a company you really want to work for? What ideas do you have? What would you include in the subject line? Name of potential position. That is one, one example. Let's see what the others are. Uh, or name of type of project. In the meantime, I'll confirm uh, online streaming, live online streaming on Facebook. Is it? No, still not working. Okay. Uh, personal value proposition question mark. Okay. So whether to include a, um, the unique selling proposition. Okay. Introduction partnership, their pain and how we can address it. If you know, if we know that, okay, see two more people are typing. So I'll wait for some ideas. Mm -hmm. You have to sell a solution to their common problems. If you have that solution and if you know about their problems, yes. Okay, good. Now, the most common subject lines are usually um, name and CV. Um, my favorite, all written in caps lock. <laughs> uh, looking for a job, CV, do you want to increase sales? Now, all of these subject lines, um, I'd say, is a big no because they communicate, I'm looking for a job, I might even be desperate. So this is a no. Uh, what we want to achieve is to find a subject line that is neutral, enigmatic, that says, I'm not desperate. This is a business as usual email, so not something completely extraordinary out of the blue, but something you want your potential boss would usually receive and clicks on it, even by mistake. Um, could be, and some of you have suggested it, executive team, sales team, direct contact, etc. Now, um, here is another comment. If you research someone in a company, a hint could be to use the key. Uh, okay, um, so um, what Claudio is suggesting is actually a continuation of how to use uh, Google. Is that correct? I think so. Okay, back to the slides. Um, okay, yes. Um, when you contact your potential boss, tips of how to write the cover email. So we know the subject line, not too desperate, business as usual kind of thing. And then the cover email itself should be written to the point. Here we add, what do you have to offer? Not what do I want? These are two different motivation letters. It should definitely be personalized. So here are an example. Um, dear Mr. Smith, I'm getting in touch with you to inquire whether Coca-Cola is considering strengthening its team of IT professionals or its executive team, its board, etc. So the first line is about why you are getting in touch with them. If so, so if you're considering it, 
please allow me to introduce myself or briefly about myself. And then we basically summarize the profile summary. In other words, here we use and communicate your unique selling proposition, which means you need a really good CV and a unique profile summary. Okay. So as already mentioned before, it's what is your potential value or one of you phrased it, what's your value proposition and not what is in it for me. And then you add anything else that's relevant. For example, the languages that you speak in or the languages that you work in, that you are open to relocation, etc. Then, so if, if so, briefly about myself and then you have about three to five bullet points, please find attached my CV with uh, documented successes. And there you add, if it is relevant to your group, uh, to your target group and to your own position, you add business cases or a project portfolio. Who, who adds that? Anybody who uh, looks for a job at a board level and project portfolio for people who actively work in IT and project management and lawyers. And then you add, I'd, um, but uh, lawyers call it a transaction list. And then you say, I'd appreciate your brief feedback, kind regards, and that's it. So step number four, you contact them. Step number five, you follow up within seven to 10 business days if you have not received an answer. Hi, you have just watched a little fragment of all the know-how at Career Angels that goes into finding the best possible job. We have decided to put our know-how into one very thorough and structured course that is now available on Udemy. In that course, we will walk you through all four steps of the job hunting process. Step number one is about goal setting, realistic goal setting. We will explain career management theory backed by research, as well as walk you through the parameter bidding exercise. Step number two is about your unique selling proposition. In other words, how you position yourself on the current job market. Step number three is about communicating that in your CV, your CV for applicant tracking systems, and your optimized LinkedIn profile. Step number four, the last step, is about managing and navigating the job hunting channels, meaning how to network, how to apply to job ads, how to contact headhunters, and how to contact and reach out to decision makers at the companies you would like to work for. So in summary, the course is very thorough, explains all our methodology and is now available on Udemy. Summarizing, our course on Udemy walks you through the four steps of the job search process. Why did we decide to publish it? We did that so that your own job search becomes less frustrating, faster and more effective. If you'd like to check it out, find the link down there in the description.